The latest After Effects beta version just dropped and it's packed with some of the biggest, most useful features and upgrades I've ever seen for After Effects, no joke. I'm gonna walk you through all of them right now, starting with the all new parametric meshes. You heard that right. After Effects now has a set of parametric, true 3D primitive shapes. These are basically the 3D equivalent of shape layers. We've got cubes, spheres, planes, toruses, cones, and cylinders. And each one has unique controls to customize their size, bevel, number of sides, and more. The sphere, cone, torus, and cylinder shapes all allow you to slice the object radially, which can be really great for data visualization and graphs. And the cylinders and cones also have caps that can be disabled or enabled to create some very interesting shapes, even though these are basic primitives. There are also some basic material properties for each shape type that allow you to quickly customize the look and feel of the material, things like the color and the shiny or reflectiveness of the object, and they will reflect and interact with environment lights, even comp-based environment lights that After Effects now also supports. The After Effects team has been improving the native 3D workflow by leaps and bounds for the last few years, and now that we have primitive 3D shapes, it's making it even easier to not need to jump into another software just to do some basic 3D work. There's lots more to learn about this new set of shapes, so be sure to read the full write-up down in the description. I've linked to blog posts on all of these new features, but while you're there, join the waitlist for my next course, Animation Principles for Motion Designers. It's my masterclass on what it takes to create beautiful, appealing animation as a motion designer. And if you join the waitlist, you'll get access to the biggest discount I will ever offer on this course, plus gain early access to the course and get to join the private limited run community for the course where I'll be available to critique your work and host live calls as you learn. I'm wrapping up production on that course right now, but I'll send an email out to waitlisters as soon as it's ready. You can join the waitlist for free. There's a link down in the description. Next up, let's talk about Substance 3D Materials. Substance 3D is another Adobe app for creating materials for 3D models. It's not included with Creative Cloud, it's an add-on, but Adobe is providing over 1,300 substance materials called Subsars for free. They'll completely change the way your geometry looks and even react to scene lighting. These materials are very advanced. There's some pretty crazy stuff that you can do in Substance and they even can create transparency through your geometry and all of that reacts to environment lights and shadows that can be rendered natively in After Effects. Substars are created in Substance 3D, but allow you to modify specific properties directly inside of After Effects. And you can think of them like Mogerts for 3D materials. And if you're a Substance 3D user, you can even create your own materials. They don't even need to be in the comp. So long as they're in the project, they'll show up in the material list. Because they're built in Substance 3D, kind of like Mogerts, there are going to be different properties for different materials. So be sure to explore these different materials and see what you can do with them and what options you have inside of After Effects. This is a huge deal and a massive library for you to take advantage of. I mean, just look at how many different materials that you can instantly download and try out directly inside of After Effects. No additional fees or subscriptions are necessary. You're free to use anything that you see here, however you see fit. Next up is native SVG import. Yes. Finally, you can snag a vector logo off of Wikipedia and drop it directly into After Effects. And it even imports it as a shape layer in a composition, so no conversion is required. No more going into Illustrator and saving it as an Illustrator file than converting it into After Effects to shape layers. This is one of those little things that saves a huge amount of time, and I'm so glad to see it. Speaking of Illustrator, gradients are now preserved when creating shape layers from Illustrator documents. Now, freeform gradients are still not a thing in After Effects, so those aren't going to transfer, but this is a major step forward in automated artwork prep for animation and saves you a lot of time for having to rebuild those gradients inside of After Effects with your shape layers. Vector gradients also now have two new properties, scale and rotation. This allows you to create more customized gradient shapes on shape layers and is a welcome addition in my book. I love having that extra control. Next, we have four new effects, which means I have some more effects of After Effects series videos to make. First, Native Unmalt is here. If you're not familiar, an Unmalt effect removes black or white backgrounds from footage. This is especially useful for stock footage of things like fire, or explosions, lens flares, or light leaks, and it allows for much easier compositing of those elements on top of other footage and layers because you can't really key out black or white using a color key. And setting those layers to screen or 
multiply is going to give you a lot of transparency where you don't want it. Unmult fixes that. It keys out that black or white background and preserves all of the other data in the footage. So just drag it onto the source and adjust the properties to key out the background. This effect supports 32 bits per channel, HDR footage, and it's even GPU accelerated. It's about time. The other three new effects are all audio related, which Okay, Adobe, <laughs> we've got gate, which is used to reduce noise in audio, compressor that levels out dynamics in volume and distortion, which distorts your audio. Definitely read up on how to use those effects in the blog post down in the description. I give audio effects a hard time in After Effects because I don't wanna do audio work in After Effects, but the fact that you can make some basic adjustments to audio in After Effects, I'm sure is a welcome addition to many After Effects users' workflows. Finally, we have lossless compressed playback. This essentially gives you the exact same high quality previews that you're used to seeing, but it uses up significantly less storage space without really any visual loss in fidelity. What this means for you is that you'll be able to preview things much longer before you run out of space and the cached frames have to be deleted. This preference is gonna be checked on by default, but you can disable it if you don't want it by going to the disk cache section of your preferences. Now, one big thing to keep in mind about this beta version is that it is a whole number upgrade, meaning it is now version 26, and anything you create in the beta version will not open in the public current release of version 25 unless you save backwards to that 25 version. And obviously, any of these new features that you use in the beta version will not be available in the previous version. That being said, if you've never worked in the beta version of the app, I would strongly encourage you to try it. I do it all the time and have never had any critical issues that prevent me from getting work done. And once version 26 is pushed out to the public release, you'll be able to have these installed side by side and jump back and forth between them at any point. And that is my speed run of all the new features in the current release of the After Effects beta. I am not exaggerating when I say that I think this is the biggest After Effects update I have ever seen. And I am so excited to start using these features in my day-to-day -day workflow in After Effects. If you have any feedback, make sure that you go to those blog posts that I included in the description and leave your feedback there. The After Effects team is very willing to listen to what you have to say about these features, how they work, and if you run into any bugs. If they don't know about the bugs, they can't squash them. So let them know, share some love. They are doing excellent work, working their butts off, getting these features out. I know many of the team personally and can tell you that they genuinely care about their users and want to make this the best After Effects environment possible for us. So thank you to the After Effects team for putting all these features out for us to use. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to join the waitlist for animation principles for motion designers. The link is down in the description. Description. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.